Yeah. Cool. Right, hello and welcome back to another Let's Talk today. I'm joined by Becky. She's going to talk to us about herself and university. Hi, Hi. Becky. How hello. You doing? <laughs> you got it? Yes. Excited? Yeah. Excited. Cozy. Loving the gym vibes. Thank you very much. Yeah, I know. So, Becky, uh, we've known each other for a few years since uh, the arena. What have you been doing since the arena times? So, since we worked at the Inner Meadows, way back when, um, I went off for drama school to do three years of acting, got a degree. Um, yeah, I did acting for TV, film, and theatre, and did a bit of stage combat as well, which is what I really got into. Um, and now I graduated last year, so I'm just trying to make my way through life and get through it and just live every day as it comes, take every day as it comes. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what sort of stuff have you done then when you said film, TV and theatre? So when the drama school that I went to was called Alra, um, and it's really, it was more focused on recorded art, so mm -hmm. TV, film, voice acting, radio. Um, but obviously it focused on theatre as well. Um, so we did a lot of filming for TV, so we took lots of scripts from like Holby City and like use them as assessments. Um, so since I've graduated, since doing that, I've done bits for theatre. So you've just come to see me in Macbeth, yep. a bit of Shakespeare, which was fun. Um, I've done a short film that was about bullying um, and about mental health and raising awareness. And I've done another mental health campaign, which was for a voiceover for Young Minds, the mm -hmm. charity. I saw yeah. you actually on the page, yeah. I saw that cut, that post come up and I never actually knew that, but I saw you did some of the voiceover. Uh, did you? Yeah, that, that was really cool. Nice little job. That was my first time doing that. Um, yeah, and just trying to make my way through and just take as many opportunities as I can. Just chill out. <laughs> so what got you into acting and theatre in the first place? God, I don't even know. Um, my my dad is quite creative. Mm. Um, he's he like loves to sing. He's like in a choir, in like a Christian choir, um, and he loves to draw and things like that. So he probably has brought out my creativity when I was younger. Yeah. Um, but honestly, how it started when I was young, it sounds really weird, but it probably started with me like pretending that I hurt myself when I never did. <laughs> I know that sounds so weird. But like, if like someone did that to me, I'd go, ow, oh, exactly. So over dramatic. <laughs> over dramatic. Like being over dramatic, and then I'd go, ha, ha I filled you. And then I think my dad caught on and went, fuck, she's, she's good. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. from that over dramatic From that slap. over dramatic, like. Fuck, she, she's going places. She's going places, she's got it. So honestly, it kind of went from there and like just watching TV programs, like watching the kids' shows and then running around the house and like, Reenacting that, uh -huh. um, like the home videos I was talking to you about today just there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like me and my brother would make up scenarios like, oh, you're gonna be the bank robber and I'm gonna be the cop, and like we'd run around and make up that scenario. That's how it probably all started. And then when I was like probably about thirty, I was like really, oh, I actually really want to get so, into this. Yeah. Like I want to really do this. So then I just did like Saturday classes, teaching, and then just progressed from there and did, did it at GCSE, then did it at college in the VTech and then luckily got to drama school. That's literally where it all started. Can you remember what your first show was? My first ever show? Yeah, or like the first like in audience. Now I'll say first show because you do like a little bit in front of parents at school and stuff. What was the first show? Like that, like in terms of like a little show in terms yeah, of... Yeah, like production wise, like not a, you know, pantomime from the school or something. But then I suppose your pantomimes are still shows. Yeah, I, I tell you what, my very, very first show that comes to mind was when I was like seven. And again, this is all recorded on that. You have to give me these I'm videos. I'm going to give you them please. videos so you, can, so you can see how much of a drama, like, drama queen I was. Um, we were doing uh, like the, the Christmas show. Yeah. Like your, your Jesus and your Mary. The, oh, right, okay, that Christmas. I thought you were going to talk about the three blind mice. No, no. <laughs> so this is like your classic... Jesus and your Mary Christmas show and I was five and I was a little brat when I was young still am a bit <laughs> um, and I didn't get cast as Mary so I was like fearing <laughs> being the little diva that I was um, but instead I was cast as an angel Couldn't, how wrong how wrong how they wrong got it <laughs> um, so I was cast as an angel 
And I remember, because I was so annoyed, I was cast <laughs> an angel, I stood at the back like, and I like started crying on stage and my mum had to come and like carry me. Oh no. <laughs> so that's like, like my earliest memory of a show and it was that. So yeah. That is... <laughs> proper, proper diva. I mean, I was like five. you know, I didn't get cast as Igor in the school's you know, Rocky Monster show. I didn't stand on the stage and cry. <laughs> I was such a brat. Actually, no, I do tell you. I, I, I did, uh, it was actually one of the Christmas Carol things. Yeah. I I didn't want to be there and I hated it. And I had a towel on my head to protect Classic. Me. Well, yeah, one of the tea towels. I hated it so much. I was purposely singing the wrong notes, the wrong song. <laughs> and I just halfway through start turning on the VHS tapes. I've converted turn the towel the wrong way oh, <laughs> so no. it's just in front of my face I can't remember I think it might be my nan or it might be my mother who had it or one of the teachers who came up and was like Rip it. Pass on top. <laughs> I just used to sit there and go, <laughs> <laughs> oh god honestly it does something to you man so from what, what the whole brightness of like, not getting like the like performing it just, it just brought something out of me when I was little it's just because I was passionate about it do you know what I mean I was just really passionate about it and Turned me into a little brat. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a way for your brat to, yeah. to get a voice. Yeah, but funny enough, when I was when I was little, this is the irony of it all. When I was really really young, I had a speech impediment. Um, okay. And I wouldn't speak when I was younger. Mm. Um, so I've got an older brother who's three years older than me, and my mum and dad would notice that they'd ask me a question and I wouldn't answer, and I'd let my brother speak for me. No, I didn't know this. Are you sure this is a speech impediment? Are you being like a lazy like no, do this for Honestly, me. I did not know this. And they said it was a it was like you just wouldn't speak. And so <laughs> it was it was one I had a lisp and I've still got a bit of a lisp now. Um, but I just would not speak, I wouldn't use my voice, and I would let other people speak for me. And my mum and dad were putting on for it and going, This isn't Right, this is the age where I should be going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they told me to see someone, um, and I had, had like speech therapy, and it's like the irony because now I'm a gobshite and you I don't shut up. up. <laughs> I never shut up. So yeah, I never used to speak. Which is I crazy. remember okay, we were talking about Cameron not really having social media. There's mm. so many videos. The only reason I know he didn't was because I tried finding all the videos from me and you and him at the arena. At work. Yeah. And it's literally just like I'm sat doing my okay. job, and there's a video of you. Kicking us, or punching us, <laughs> or I get a drink thrown on my head. Yeah, just getting up to all the. It is. It is. To be fair, you say that it is the irony of a lot of people, especially when they do theatre and, and, and shows. And mm. yeah, you know, I'd say me and you are quite confident people. Yeah. Childhood, absolute opposite, and it always is the the irony of that. And I, were I you like that like, when you were younger, like quite shy? Oh, massively. The whole reason I started doing videos was because I didn't want to talk in front of anyone. Yeah. I didn't want to to perform or I didn't want to be seen in front of anyone yeah. I did all these videos and hid at the back of the class and was like just there look at the videos I don't want anything and it was a way of not performing maybe it was a confidence thing about yeah. it. if the one or two shows I did do were very young age the fear of, of messing up the lines and stuff Yeah. now I can do it as I was telling you about the Stavros Flatley thing I'll run out having no preparation and wing it absolutely wing it <laughs> that's it so what shows then, you said, you know, I've just seen you in Macbeth. What recent shows then have you been doing? How's the production from that Christmas one been up? <laughs> um, so we just did Macbeth there. That was with Theatre Space. And I've worked with Theatre Space before on their Christmas show, which was Hansel and Gretel. Mm -hmm. So it was more like a family-friendly sort of pantomime children's show. Was Macbeth not family-friendly? <laughs> Macbeth was not family-friendly. <laughs> lots of dying, lots of blood, lots of angry men. Chatting. Um but the the Christmas show was a was probably one of my very first professional theatre jobs mm. coming out of drama school. So I was really lucky to have got it, especially in the pandemic. Yeah. So I was I was really <coughs> grateful to have gotten it and I was really grateful to be working on something during them times. Um it was very different processes because with Hansel and Gretel it was a very small cast. It was four people, lots of multi rolling. Yeah. Um and obviously it was adapted for children. And then going from that to do Macbeth, which is a much larger cast, probably 14 people, lots of fighting. It was very different, but 
that's what I love. I don't. I love that in acting, no job is the same. Yeah. Everything is different. You meet different people, and you just go from one extreme to the other. That's one of the reasons why I absolutely love it. How do you feel then on like the first like few days when you meet everyone? Like, what is like the icebreaker? I'm a nervous wreck. Like I <laughs> okay. really am. Like I probably don't. Com- when you get to know me, you're like, oh my god, she never shuts up. But when I first meet people, I'm I'm sort of more reserved. Mm-hmm. You're probably saying, no, you're not. <laughs> I'm going to say, like, I've not been given any of this as evidence. But, um, you, <clears throat> but working with new people, I love it. I love getting to meet new people. I have a thing, like, as my icebreaker, I always go, what have you had for tea? I just have a weird thing. What have you had for tea? Yeah, I, I love knowing what people have eaten recently. Is that just because you like eating yourself? Uh, well, I love food, obviously, yeah. But I think you can tell a lot about a person from what they've eaten recently, or what they have for tea, or what they've brought to meanless that's sort of my icebreaker what can you tell from someone who i'm intrigued now go on if they're vegan or vegetarian okay right fair there's yeah you've got, <laughs> there you've, you you've, got you've got some there's one everyone thought i was vegan why well what in Macbeth? yeah in Macbeth. so probably two days in we're talking about ordering nando's and then oh, someone like, i don't like chicken so, no someone just went she's a vegetarian i went am i the audacity I, I, I was like, do I give off vegetarian vibes? I don't, what does that mean? And they were just like, yeah, I really saw you a vegetarian. I was like, where have you got that from? I love chicken. Have you oh, said that not. any... <laughs> <laughs> I can just imagine you guys love chicken. I love Nando's, obviously not. Did you then devour like a massive like half chicken breast in front of you? I had the biggest Nando's burger with mash and chips. The creamy mash and Nando's. Yes, because yeah. I love potatoes. So mash and chips as well. I always feel like um, the the pets question mm. is always a great one. If what, like cats or dogs? No, not even that one. No, no, not that one. I would say, no, because if you go up to someone and go, do you have any animals or do you have any pets? Mm. They'll either go, oh yeah, I have a dog or I have a cat, and then they'll not stop talking for about 10, 15 minutes about how much they love the, de- the cats and dogs and you've mm-hmm. seen every photo from the, when they were up to you know the Christmas and the tutus or they'll say no I don't have one mm, but I quite would like it maybe I'd and everyone wants a pet either some people want horses or cats or dogs yeah. or fish or guinea pigs and so it's a question where like, it will just get them on like the raw and so it'll be the rare occasion of no I don't have any pets no I don't have one but then they'll have usually a backup of why they don't want yeah. pets so you, it's an almost go-to, never feel a kind of question. I always feel mm. like that's my answer. Yeah, that, that's, I'm going to use that next time. Genius, aren't I? Yeah, genius. <laughs> Noted. Thank you. I've never, yeah, to, to be fair, I mean, I've used it more than multiple times. I've used it on patients, to keep conversation with patients. Yeah. And build rapport. But, uh, I, I, yeah, I haven't used it in like a while in a comp- proper icebreaker type set, mainly because me as a person. I feel like I don't really need an icebreaker, yeah. other than like feeding off, ooh, creepers, other than feeding off, you know, introverted people. I yeah. As an extrovert, I just take on them. Like, yeah. You are now mine. <laughs> <laughs> you are mine forever. I will take you around. <laughs> Do you no, feel like yeah. you're like that with more shy people? Yeah. Like, like work, as we said, they are. I'd l- well, <clears throat> when I did my first there, there was two people who were like 17, 18, who were on placement from a college, like a theatre college doing theatre. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was their first show. And I was actually one of the person's mentors. So I literally like had to take them under my wing. Yeah. Cause it was their first show and they hadn't like been in a professional rehearsal room before. So they were a bit nervous, but I'll, I'll never not get nervous. Like I'm, I've been doing it for years, mm-hmm. but I'll always get nervous cause I care about it so much. It just means that you're passionate. Yeah. Um, so I couldn't imagine how they were feeling having their first job, uh, but it was nice to feel like I could be there for them and, and take them on, literally like have them on my wing and guide them through it, and I hope they enjoy it. Yeah. Friends forever. That was sweet. <laughs> you have like um, actually my little bracelets, like um, for the roses from the grass. No, but we did bond over the violence because they were all into it as well. Seriously, no, I bet they weren't even into it, and you were just no, like, the- look at. Look we at, look at we have a group chat just for Love Island. I'm not even joking. 
Oh, Me, Sam and Sam, we have a group chat for Love Island. Oh, please. We do. Sam as well? Yeah, both, both Sams. Both uh, yeah. I'm no joke. I know, I don't know how I said Sam, expecting you to know which Sam is. <laughs> I, I can't, there's no way. I know. You only got into it yourself, and that's I what. I know, and I can't believe <clears throat> that I love it so much, but I do. Would you ever go on a reality TV show? <sighs> Serious answer, no. Because of the tab- uh, taboo, awkward, like, embarrassment of it all. Yeah, of, well... It's not acting. Well, it's not acting. It depends on what show you go on. I, I would... I, me, personally, I could never go on a reality show because I, I can't get into acting that way. Mm-hmm. You'd just be pigeonholed as a, oh, you were that person on that reality show who did X, Y, Z. Yeah. Which isn't good. Um. Yeah, so serious answer no, but drunk Becky who has some Scottish <laughs> <in>, maybe. <laughs> but the serious answer is no, I wouldn't. What reality shows would you like to go on? If I was to go on a reality show, it would be. You know what? It would be something like Come Dine with Me. Really? Yeah, like it cook really cook? would. I can't cook. <laughs> well, no, I, I, I love that. No, it was like I love Come Dine with Me. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I love four in a bed as well. Like, if I had a B and B, I'd be on four in a bed. But come dine with me, my dinner date, something like that. I'm a celebrity. SES. We're not celebrities. Oh, SES. I would do SES in a heartbeat. I would love to do it for the challenges because yeah. it's mint. I want to find like someone who does the challenges with less intensity because I feel like I, that guy, Anthony, whatever his Anthony, name is, yeah. would would kill me. I sort of want someone to do like to do that for me, like break me and then build me back up again. Oh my god. <laughs> this is a family friendly show. In a in a deep spiritual way. Deep No This what me I meant in like a spiritual Spiritual way. spiritual in a metaphorical soulful way. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I'd look, the thing is, right, I would actually... Do they, have they ever actually opened the answer lab, um You know what, I feel like it's in Manchester as well. See, think, it's a place to be. I feel like that's where everything's happening. It is. Manchester. Yeah, I think it's in Manchester they've opened it, and it's like you do all the bus trigger trials. I know exactly what you mean, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it is in Manchester. Is it Manchester? Trafford Centre, I think it is. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah it See, I want to do that, but at the same time, it's like, it's, mu- it's not like the I'm a celeb, I'm a celeb. Yeah. I want, I'm a celeb, I want Love Island mm. with, like, regular, like, people in it. I agree. Like, I want to see, you know, Derek, age 54, who's a construction worker, going against, you know, Andy, who's an accountant. Yeah, me too. That and would be quality entertainment. Loads of people have said that wouldn't be entertaining, but I think it would be. Yeah, because you look at shows like Total Wipeout. You look at shows Total like Total Wipeout. Oh, well, that's insane. Sick. Look at like Ninja Warrior Course. Like a mm. lot of these. Like I mean, X Factor. I know that's because that's been cancelled now. Yeah. Well, that was classic for the corkers that you used to get through the rehearsals. Yeah. That's what everyone okay. watched it for. No one cared about the, the actual live show. Yeah. You want to watch it for the regular people who come on and embarrass themselves. The, I feel like that would be you. That would be that me. That would be you. It it w- it would. Yeah, I'd be that girl if I was on Love Island. I'd be that girl who would trip over all the time and spill their drink. Or I'd be the person who would... None of the girls are, are in the pool. I'd have my goggles on, my cap on, and doing the mermaid in the swimming pool. I was just going to say this. No one's in the pool. <laughs> no one goes in the pool. Why are people not diving, somersaulting, bombing in the pool? I, I, I hate that. how they walk and they're just like, oh, can I have a chat? And they'll sit on like, the beanbags and something. It's like... I would, I would not be like that. I'd be straight in that film, mate. Eh? <laughs> That's how you're going to put the cap on your head. That's the funniest part of it. Yeah. That. Goggles, cap, the whole shabam. You need a mermaid's tail. So I'm a mermaid's me. tail. Because I can swim like a mermaid really well. You should actually apply then. Seriously, I need to find you a link wherever these mermaid <gasps> teaching schools are. I That'd think you should cool. do that. Other than the fact that you need a brief. It would look cool on my CV. That could. I mean, I'm not sure what shores you're going to get. <laughs> it's a Qualified skill? mermaid. <laughs> It's a some sort of skill, I suppose. The next part's the fairy in the wood. There you go. In stage combat, swim like a mermaid. Boom. All you need. Would you have to do a musical? 
Because you say you're not musically talented, which I'm I think is I'm not musically talented. Um, I can't sing, do you? Because I'm, you can. I'm not a singer. My speciality is film, TV, theatre. Musicals aren't for me. I, I, like, <laughs> I like to dance, mm-hmm. but for musicals, you've got to be a triple threat. And anyone who's a triple threat, like, hats off to them because it's hard bloody work when you go. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> but my heart lies with TV and film. Mm. Would love to get that bit more. Yeah, but then, like, you know, Colin Firth and um, Russell Crowe couldn't really sing, yet they were in Mamma Mia and Les Mis. True, true. But they probably had extensive training. Yeah, but you wouldn't be thrown into a musical film and being like, no, yeah. any training on vocals. I think, you know what, I think maybe one day I, I, would, I wouldn't say no to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe what I need to do is get myself more confident with it, maybe take some private singing lessons, get myself into it a bit more, feel more confident, and then maybe one day. <coughs> but may, maybe, but for now, it's, just, off the table. it's off the table for now. <laughs> so what makes you then really want to go to like movies and then theatres? Um, so for me, w- watching a, a good, solid TV drama, it's just, with musicals, right, everything's heightened, isn't it? That was it? very musical the way you said it. <laughs> with with musical. musicals, I felt like you were actually going to bring in your song in that bit. It's musical to me, <laughs> Musicals, um, they're they're all very heightened, aren't they? It's a heightened version of reality, yeah. which um, which I love. I love watching that. I love it, but doing it, mm-hmm. not really for me. I love more grounded, grounded in reality, and the subtleties of TV and film. Mm-hmm. I love acting for theatre. Love it, mm-hmm. but there's things that you do in acting on the <coughs> stage that can't be seen in a camp. But it but can be in a camera lens. So one of the thing reasons why I love acting for film and TV is that the, the subtle movements on the face can mean something. Yeah. Whereas that wouldn't be translated on the, on a stage. Yeah. So it's mm-hmm. very subtle, very small, very real, very true. Um that that's the reason why I think TV and film is more for me. The subtleties of the acting that it's it's embedded in truth. Because there's nothing worse, I think, than watching something and going, oh, they're just saying lines and acting. Yeah. I love watching something and going, and getting lost in it and say, and going, oh, I, I didn't even realise they were, they were acting. I just felt like I was... In the... In the I place. felt like I was in, in their living room with them. Are you really good at face acting, then? At, like, face acting? Yeah, at, like, yeah. facial expressions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. And do you have the subtle, like... You know how The Rock always does this? The thing? Rock's, like... Smolder. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, when when I was at drama school and when I was in third year, which is like your industry year, mm-hmm. we filmed <coughs> show reels, which is like mini films to have on your CV, to have on your mm-hmm. like actors spotlight, which is what it's called. Um, so the scenes that I did for there were like two contrasting scenes, obviously like show some range. So one of them was a very serious <coughs> like drama. And then one of them was like more of a light comedy. Was that in the lockdown show thing you did? Because um, I saw some like trailer thing for an episode. Yeah. And I don't know if that was the show release. It was about. probably something <coughs> different. Because we did two things. We did show reels, <coughs> which was before the pandemic. And right, then when yeah. the pandemic hit and then everything got cancelled, we went, let's do something ourselves. Let's not wait. We're going to film something ourselves. So I filmed a five minute. Uh, scene from mm. a TV show, and so that's probably what you saw. Um, so I'd like to think that I'm good at it, um, but practice makes perfect, and then you just gotta mm-hmm. keep driving, keep going. So then, what do you, you know? Is it then theatre you prefer more, or is it movies and actual camera work? Like, because there is, there's a massive difference between having a live studio audience doing yeah. things practically and that whole, you've got to over-exaggerate everything for, yeah. a, for a theatre show to, to give that, like, immersive world. Like, films, digital manipulation, art, 
special yeah. effects all go into it and then in the world of theatre you've got to pull that one stuff so is movies better because it's easier for that world to be created for you we, I wouldn't say it's easier that they're, they're all difficult for different reasons yeah. um, you could you could argue I mean I argue with myself <coughs> like what's my favourite I love theatre um, because at the end of the day with theatre you don't stop you, yeah. in that character the whole time and you're so focused it takes such a level of focus which is just immense and then obviously you have that live reaction it's different every night as well depending on the audience it's spontaneous whereas film you could argue it's actually more restricted because with film you've got to think about continuity mm -hmm. so you've kind of got to do things the same so you could argue that's more restricted and less playful than theatre right yeah so I love I love all of the different types of acting for theatre, film, TV. I, I really do. I could sit here and argue for so long about why that one's better, oh, but that one's better. But at the minute, most of the jobs that I've had have been in theatre. Mm -hmm. um, I've only done a couple of short films and a couple of um, voiceovers and stuff, so it's something I'd love to explore a bit more. Um, because I've had my fair share of Shakespeare and children's theatre, so I'd like to do something a bit more embedded in the truth and more truthful for camera. Because mm. with camera work, you've got to... It's a lot to think about, really. And at the same time, you're like, oh, someone's recording me. Whereas in theatre, theatre you don't really worry about that, do you? Yeah, you're more... So... I mean, just yeah. like this, you know. I, three, I, know, I know. Three cameras for one little podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that was one of the things I had to get over at drama school. I remember my first lesson for camera, I was so aware that I was being recorded that I was just like... Blank. Blank. So safe, like I don't know what to do. Probably was 18. So it was like my first lesson, I was terrified. So that probably, it probably took me like six months to like get comfortable. Probably calm down, yeah. And calm down. But once you do calm down, the results are amazing. Like I love, I, what I loved as well is watching other people, watching other actors training and watching them develop and, and get comfortable in front of the camera. Cause you can see when someone's at ease and when someone's comfortable doing their thing. Yeah. Cause it's not good watching someone who's uncomfortable. You want to be at ease with them. And it's the most beautiful thing when you see someone just really nail it and just really be comfortable. I think that was the benefit of my family doing everything. Like from the moment I was born, I had a camera face yeah and I mean most people are uh, there's a lot of kick off with how many people just using smartphones filming kids and how they yeah there was an art I saw of just a person's head changed with the smartphone it's like oh this is all I can see but like we've you know we've always put a camera up and filmed all the important parts and I think that's just got me completely used to the fact of cameras being around constantly and, yeah. I, and loads of people always give me grief it's just oh my god he's changed with his camera and he's filming everything again but it's just like it's just second nature to me not yeah. in a whole I'm young and technology's taking over but it's you know from 1980 like I was saying we've had everything yeah so it just it does feel like even before the whole technology boom and the internet it's just been a family thing yeah <clears throat> I want to I want like theatre arts in general but that's music acting painting I want I, I wish there wasn't such a I, don't, I mean, I don't know about you when you were at school, but people would like frown upon you if you were doing like drama or music mm -hmm. or art. Like there was a weird, like, mm, that's that's whatever. Yeah, no, yeah. And it's, it was so weird because it's art is the best thing ever. As, as stupid as that sounds, it's just one of the best things and most cathartic things you could do. And I hate that the government don't appreciate what art does for this country and what mm. art does for people or just for the economy for god's sake like but all all of it's getting slashed now the funding for it has been absolutely slashed for the arts in schools so i'm i would be gutted if young kids at school at gcse age don't get the chance to do music at gcse or drama yeah. like i did because it's opened up so many opportunities for me not just in terms of acting as a career but confidence speaking, uh, empathy, empathising with somebody else, like it just, it changes you. So I'm annoyed that the government are not appreciating it. Don't know about you. Well, in my school, saying. it was listed as four things. So you've got art, <coughs> art, dance, media, 
Mm-hmm. And I think the food tech was probably put in there for some reason. <laughs> uh, but that was all put under creative arts. Yeah. So you had four times a year. Each of them times you'd do a different subject. So you only had three months of the year to, yeah. to learn some dance, learn some music, learn some art, learn. Oh, no, um, dance, music, art, and media. There you go. Food tech must have been different then. But yeah, there was always crap. I mean, if you did. GCSEs. <clears throat> if you were in top sets, you did a language. If you did in lower sets, you had media. But it's just it wasn't. It's not pushed massively. You know, you do two hours compulsory PE. Mm. You do literally five, six hours a week of maths, English, and what's ridiculous as well is, especially nowadays, they're always all oh, people learn differently. More people are academic. More people are creative. Mm. So why do we have to choose to do the creative ones and not the academic ones? Yeah. I, I'm much better at art and dance and media than I ever was at maths, English and thinking about Bobby. Me too. But I never did any of them as much as I did the others. Yeah. And I think it's ridiculous how schools still just stick to that. Yeah, it's just such an old way of, in, in, in closed minded way of thinking. Mm. It, it just doesn't make any sense to me and it just makes me really sad. And, the cutting B text, the cutting of B, the cutting of Oh B-tex. god, yeah, I've seen that in the papers as well. Yeah, they're completely scrapping the B text and performing arts, and that's just heartbreaking. Yeah, especially considering that the amount of people I know who did B text, yeah, just for either ease for that, that's their level they were working on, or because that was whatever they were interested in, yeah. it was a B tech level. So it's it's crap. And I mean, you see theatres everywhere. Like the the show I want to go and see is. Um, Play That Goes Wrong down in London. Play That Goes Wrong! It's great, I've seen it. We're yeah. going, me, I've, I mean, I've, I've saw the BBC show on yeah. TV and I've watched some of the online ones. Um, where me and my sister actually from the Magic Goes Wrong one. Oh, oh, nice! We did that as an act for New Year, like two years ago. Class. And they took it down. The video, they, the actual, like, it copyright? The actual company, ah. so the, the Magic Goes Wrong, the variety performance they did at the Royal Variety shows. We did that for New Year's Eve, so we basically like copied the act, yeah. changed it a little bit to, to match our family audience rather than a royal variety audience. But the actual company, like it wasn't just an automatic, like automated striker, but we've noticed some copyright in here. The actual company had watched the video, manually flagged it for copyright, and then had to send their like show off to, to YouTube to get it like oh my removed. God. So I had like a little, I don't know. So the irony of me now going to watch a magic show goes wrong <laughs> is quite funny. I'm, I feel like my wanted poster will be on the door. Yeah, doors. do not let this man in. Yeah, <laughs> but that's the show I really want to see and it's in London and it's listed as the only show that's not been like porn. I know Lion King's been advertised to come back yeah. and a few others, but it's crap to think like. It is. It's like... Everything's back to normal, but none of them are No, allowed. throughout the whole of the pandemic, the arts and theatre is just being treated as like the bottom of the pile. Mm. They don't appreciate how much theatre actually contributes to the economy and how many people actually work in the theatre. Like, not just as an actor or a dancer, but behind the scenes, stage managers, lighting technicians, sound technicians. It employs so many people. So during the pandemic, obviously everyone lost their jobs, which wasn't great. But no, the government just don't appreciate how much it actually does, and it, it's great that like Andrew Lloyd Webber. I don't know if you know about this, but Andrew Lloyd Webber, obviously one of the richest, favorite people in the world, his production of Cinderella got cancelled, mm. which is like fair enough. That's annoying, but think of how many other people have had their shows cancelled who aren't as rich as yeah. Andrew Lloyd Webber. Like it's great. The West End is brilliant. But there's more to theatre than the West End. There's regional theatre, and regional theatre is really frowned upon because it's not London. But not everything's I London. I love a good local show. I, I, I love a local theatre, a local show, regional show. Not everything is centred around London, which needs to get in the bin. Because <laughs> the, some of the best theatre and best experiences... Get in, get in the bin, get in please. The bin. <laughs> Some of the best shows I've ever seen have been in like Manchester, Newcastle, like amazing shows. So 
more funding needs to be put in to regional theatre, I think, because it's great, London's great, but there is more to theatre than just London, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. Which shows do you recommend? Which ones have been great to see? I saw a brilliant one woman play at the Royal Exchange in Manchester, mm -hmm. and it was like, a, I've never seen anything like it in my life. It was a one woman show, and it was a gig play. So it was like a gig, slash a musical, slash a play. Okay. So inventive, so crazy. This one woman on stage with her guitar, mm. singing, but then playing like five different characters. And it was basically about, it's called Bloody L, but spelled bloody in the name in L. L. Yeah. Um, and it was basically about her being a lesbian and the pandemic and dating. Mm. And it was just the funny, I cried with laughter. I cried actual tears because it was, ups I was, sad as well it was just and it was all just one woman on the stage and it was just absolutely fantastic it was it was my first play that i saw back after covid so i think i was emotional as well yeah the whole um, love of it were you actually in like a i still haven't been in a theater i thought the the macbeth one was going to be in a in a like a theater in a theater because when, yeah. when i booked the tickets and i was like oh you're in the upper circle and i was like oh upper circle upper circle i don't mind about no. i'll have that right there no. oh comfy seats this will be great and then the guy was oh, like bless you there's the floor there's like, the floor thank you <laughs> but it was really right really annoying as well when i found out that it was that church i was like okay it's gonna be outside like it was for one of the last ones that yeah did. that's okay i went there last time uh, the sunset was right in my eye because I sat in the same spot. I was like, sunset, yeah. it was right in my eye. I couldn't see, so I was like that for a good like half. Hour. Yeah. I was like, God damn it. I, I was on the grass, I had nothing, I was cold. So I brought a hoodie for myself, I brought a mat to sit on. So I was like, Yes, this is great. And I brought my sunglasses, the green ones. Oh, of course. So I sit down, the guy goes, There's your seat. Two people <laughs> with deck chairs no. right in front. I was just that, oh. Everyone around me had deck chairs, and I'm at the back on a mat on the grass. So I'm literally now, like every now and then, looking at the old women next to us and like shuffling over, like trying to get like closer, and then going, okay, cool, I can say the wish. And then you move over there. I was like, okay, let me just let me just lean this way. Oh bless. No, I'm just over. And then the best part was, I had the best vision when the guy lifted and tried taking a picture on his phone. So I was watching him through his phone going, this is it, there we go, I can, oh, I can see Becky and all of them, oh, that's, that's nice. Oh, bless you. So yeah, my head was like that for a good majority of the oh. day. It was, I mean, it was hilarious, so now I know I'm going to take deck chairs to, you know, the next At one. At least you know for to, next time. But I guarantee they'll have, like, blocks and shit, so they'll still be Probably. worn up for me. No, but thank you for coming, Mike. No, it's all right, I mean, I'll have any support, I came to be our guest. Be our guest. That was a fantastic show. That Wouldn't was an awful that. show. That was a wonderful show. What was that for, actually? Was that just like your uni thing, or did you um, and the, just want that, to? That be our guest show that me and Cameron set up. It was like a variety show, and we did that to raise money for me to go to drama school. Right. Yeah. Because I didn't have enough money. Because I'm boring. Yeah, but that that was the reason why we why we put that on. Mm. Um, we raised quite a bit of money actually. That was. <laughs> It was a good night. I mean, cringy because obviously, well, obviously, yeah. obviously, because we were young and just dicking about. <laughs> but it was fun. No, but you're always so like supportive of like me and Cam and like anyone really like you come across shows like yeah they're doing this case and come and see shows. So it's really nice. So thank you. It's all right. I, I just know you know I know a lot of people who do. I mean, I've been I've been in it myself. Media mm -hmm. photography. It's very niche and you do it yourself and you know, all you've got is who's around you. Especially for people who especially through COVID and pandemics, yeah. They've all made, you know, fitness accounts or they've made, you know, DIY accounts. They make accounts based on whatever they're doing product wise and the way the algorithm works is the more engagement it gets, the more it gets on people's natural explore feed. So, you know, the more times I come and see your show the, the better you get reception wise, the more I share, you know, there's your headshot, share it, comment on a post or something, it just boosts it yeah. so that I know subconsciously I've made a little bit more of an effort so that hopefully, you know, yeah, the next agent will, will come and, and, and see you or the next show will come and pick you up and that. And I mean, you know, I, I enjoy a variety of things myself. I love theatre anyway, so I'm more than happy. 
it's a show for me, and I get to be entertained for two hours or so. And then I get to watch my friends, and like I haven't seen you in what probably two and a half years, so it'd be nice to have a little catch up. Thank you for having me. Because <laughs> when was the last time you saw each other? I think the last time we saw each other was. It was probably that Christmas night. Was it probably that Christmas night? Oh god, yeah, it, it must have been, like it Christmas must have been that Christmas night at work. You always know, hilarious about Christmas night, actually. A few of the staff, of course, knew you. A few of the others, yeah. of course, had no knowledge you, of yeah. you, but had knew you from how often I talked about you at work. Um, Teresa, Michelle, all knew you. Carol, no fucking clue. Of course. She came up to us the day before and she was just like, Who's that? Jay? Who was that? And I was just like, Becky, you know Becky. And they were just like, Who? I, I don't know who it was. Who? She worked. She was like, yeah, it was a staff too. Oh and she was like, God. Carol then had a massive heart attack because she was like, has she worked this Christmas? I was like, no, she you know, worked in the past. Yeah. But she came back. I think you might have done one or two shifts when you came up, did you? I, or not really? I don't want to say I did any. Did I don't, you? No. I don't want to say I did any. You meant to. I feel like you were meant to. I feel like I was meant to. I feel thing. like I was meant to and then it never happened. <laughs> was it meant to? I think I put you back on the books. But I just never got <laughs> For a week and nothing came. Look at the books. Who's Becky? Uh, Becky, oh. yeah, put it down. Uh, shifts, there's none. Christmas party. Though. Oh, Christmas party, I'm there. <laughs> but yeah, I remember she was just like, oh, she was like, oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was like your girlfriend or something. You'd snuck in. I was like, you could have just said to us if you were going to sneak her in. I was like, no, it was a staff member, Carol. And she was like, okay, yeah, that's cool. Because of course we got free pizzas and everything. We did get free pizzas. And they were just like, who's this friend? Who's that? <laughs> who's this friend? God, that's so funny. That was a fair, that was a That's when we all went ice skating. You were like sick, like, skating around. And I was like falling on my arms all the time. <laughs> like I said, a man with many talents. Yeah, you are. No, to be fair, I was stuck on that ice cream for about twelve hours. Mm. I was the only one with uh, first aid training as well. You know. Out of everyone at Raiden. Everyone at Raiden who was on shifts for them, like Christmas like weekend dudes, really busy. And you were the only one. Only one. Surely Even so like the security guard they got to sit in the first aid booth, like someone had a fall, so I rang for the security on my radio, handed it, like picked this girl up, put her over the ice cream. Security then came and radio was, Jay, can you come in? So now in my boots, I've got to like, walk over to the uh, first aid box. And she was like, um, so I filled out the, the paperwork. I, don't, I can't do anything. I was like, what do you mean you can't do anything? She was like, I'm a first aid train. I was like, no, why are you on this station? <laughs> So not only was I now 12, you know, for 12 hours on an ice ring, cleaning it every hour, God. picking people. It was, I mean, I was okay at ice skating, but then I was like really good at ice skating yeah. by the end of the Christmas holidays. That's the only reason I would, I'd go with the, I'd go back to the arena if I could dick around for 12 hours. Yeah, it was mm. fun for what it was worth. It was fun. We yeah. had good times. It was when we were there because, you know, the old owners didn't care. We just got left to our own devices. Yeah. We were the managers. It, I mean, you you definitely were. Me, me and Dylan were the managers. You can just go away with absolute murder all the time. Yeah. That was fun. I still get Snapchat memories. <laughs> um, like our time at Reddit, and there's just one where I'm like flipping bottles into the bin and like smashing bottles in the bin, and you're just like. I use that. That's the, that's the thing, you know, I'm like, every time I talk, there's two stories. There's one, your first shift when you came with us. Uh -huh. That's the story I tell every teaching session or anytime anyone goes, how did you deal with conflict as a manager? Um, and secondly, why I've got um, damaged eardrums. It's from <laughs> that video of me and you flipping them behind, but I'm just like passing them one by one out of the bin and you're just like, smash, smash, <laughs> Hulk smash, boom. <laughs> You'd miss every single one, then you'd yeah. quickly dab. Massive dab. So every time, like, oh, why can't you hear very well? So like, just watch these videos, listen to the <laughs> clanking sound. Oh, God. That was, was like, fun. This is why I've got bio atriums. And then the, it was your first, I don't know if you remember this or how well you do. One of your first shifts, it must have been a kids' football presentation or some presentation. The queue was two hours long. Um, and this guy came up to the bar and ordered, like, six Fosters and, uh, like, three uh, vodka corks or whatever massive order because he was sick of waiting in a queue so it was kind of pile on and he was being really awful and aggressive to you and i remember letting you just stand out back and chilling i think i brought some chips at this point and then i went and, and dealt with them and like calmed them well, not even calmed them down i just pissed him off more to the point mm. where he didn't want to talk to me and then did his order and then fucked off and i came back and i made sure you were okay oh. but i always i always remember that story of how i i, I dealt with 
because was that you on your field for first shift? And I just remember you standing there going, because ah! <laughs> you kept coming over like every late Tuesday. Because of course it was bar one, so I I, I always go on bar one with whoever I uh, teach, <clears throat> and you just kept going. What's um, what's this and this? What's uh, this? Where's this and this? And I asked all you, and I'm like, this is how you do it. And he was getting frustrated, and I was yeah. just like, fuck off. Man. I do I do vaguely <clears throat> remember that. I mean. I was going for you as a traumatic experience. Was, I imagine you I just probably like battered it. Locked out my trauma. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it's character building. Trauma character is building. character building. <laughs> you said contemporary dance. Yes. Trauma. <laughs> oh Have you ever seen that video? It's, it's like it's a TikTok and it's some kid, and he's just like, "Why is every like GTSA drama class the same as this?" Who's made that one? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Cameron send each other their memes. <laughs> all the time and it's like GCSE drama 2015 it's like drugs 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 don't do it no <laughs> yes it's not that. <laughs> say no to drugs <laughs> to say no <laughs> to just dramatic turn that, ahead that, yeah. that was really and I mean this quite literally that was me and Cameron in the tech drama I mean that, that was really using you uh yes it was it was Oh god, you dear. That was like, did you have any combat firing in that one? In Be Our Guest? Yeah. No, when we did Be Our Guest, I hadn't done any combat fighting. I only got into combat fighting at drama school. Because um, when I was in first year, it was compulsory to do like your standard combat. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I was standard like. Standard combat. Standard. So that's um, like level one of combat. So that's like unarmed. <laughs> All right, okay. Unarmed first, and then rapier and dagger. So it's like one one sword's like that big, and the other sword's like that big. So fighting for two. You're what? You're holding two, or it's someone and someone. No, so they've got two swords. I've got two swords. Right, okay. and that's so level you, one. Yeah, that's level one. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I remember doing that, and I did really well, and I went, "This is sick. <laughs> this is really All cool. Right. I like this." And I went on to do intermediate, which is when I did. Quarter staff, which is like a big stick. Mm -hmm. uh, long sword, which is like your classic witcher, big ass sword. Um, and then I did knife, which is like this is one big. And then I like how it progresses like level two, huge stick, level three, massive, massive level stick. four, dagger. Dagger, yeah. <laughs> and then I went on to do advanced, which was case of rapiers, which is two long swords, mm -hmm. which is quite like it's like fencing almost for that one. And then I did sword and shield, which was sick. And then I did <coughs> broad sword, which is slightly different to long sword. Level two and a bit. Yeah. Um, so I just, I, I, was, I fell in love with it. I always thought I had a bit of a, I'd never done stage combat before drama school, but I always had like an instinct that I would like it because mm -hmm. I'm quite sporty. I, I, I love like doing stuff that's physical. Yeah. Um, so when I eventually got here, I went, this is it. I'm going to really work on this and like use it to my advantage. So I'm going to constantly work on it. I'm doing a course in two weeks to work on some more weapons. Um, and hopefully I'll get to the point where I'll, I'll be confident enough to do it in like maybe film, TV, The mm -hmm. Witcher, please. <laughs> <laughs> Cast me! Well, that's a subtle hint. <laughs> Not a subtle hint. Anyone from The Witcher. Cast me! So does it only go as like melee weapons or do combat like also include like weapons and stuff? Um You know how like in warm horse they're like riding on a horse and like shooting the gun at the same yeah. time? Would that count under it? Or? So with the company that I'm doing these exams with, they're all like weapons in terms of swords, knife. You can even do cloak and dagger, which is like you use a cloak. How cool is that? Cloak and dagger. Cloak and dagger, which nice. is sick. It's a very peaky blind as that. It sounds. is, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So that's that sort of course. In terms of firearms, like guns and stuff, I'm looking into doing a course in that as well because I think that'd be really beneficial. And mm. because um, I haven't told you this, but I've done airsoft before. Nice. And it was sick again. I can only imagine you running around. It's one of those things. <laughs> I got so <laughs> carried away. I really loved it. Again, I had like an inkling that I'd, I'd really like it because I've done paintballing, which is sort of similar. Yeah. Um, 
But my roommate who I live with, he's like an airsoft pro, so we went together and I really loved it and I'm like, again, I could use this to my advantage in acting. Because mm-hmm. um, the more the more like speciality, special skills that you have, the better, because the more specific it is. Like, mm-hmm. how many five foot one, petite, blonde, brown haired, Mackham girls do you know who have specialised in sword and shield? Not no many. So far one so far do you know what i mean so the more skills that i can get under my belt surely the more beneficial it's going to be hopefully you think there's a there's a sensor in gate set um <clears throat> it's an unlimited pinball place so they just get like little rubber balls so you yeah. move it up at the end and fill it if you go to that that's an amazing that part literally cool. just to go ham on people yeah that sounds cool i was there for my birthday ran off one of the one of the hills we run up it and literally had my mate at the top so I was like, fuck, so I ran back down, made him a bottom, and literally the pair of them were just like, this distance now, coming up, and like, God, that's how like close oh. you can get. Yeah. It so, hurts, yeah. man. That would be cool for some little practice. Yeah, yeah definitely, that sounds mint. Definitely cool. Yeah. That sounds really mint. I'm going to do axe throwing as well. There's an axe throwing centre in Horton. I was half expecting you to say it's in Manchester. <laughs> no, no, so, I mean, there is in Manchester, because everything's in Manchester. Um, but there is definitely an axe throwing place in Horton that I, I discovered the other day and I thought that would be really cool to get into as well. Because mm. you can also fight with an axe and a shield, which would be sick to learn as well. Mm, you could as well. That would so be very good for witcher wise. Yeah, yeah, like Vikings or something like that. Because that's exactly what I'm into. Exactly I mean, you, I'm into. You, you were saying you wanted to do a lot of paddleboard and, and surfing, especially this weekend. Mm. Yes. How good are them as Nisa? Nice, like the combat stuff, I can imagine that's very beneficial. Could you yeah. like, utilize any of the water sports stuff? Definitely, like, I think, I mean, this probably sounds so crazy, but even like being a, uh, like working in a bar, having like known how to make cocktails, mm-hmm. that is beneficial because some jobs require you to do that. And at the end of the day, it, say, for example, you've got a job. Mm-hmm. and it's between two people but the job requires you to surf mm-hmm. there's one person who does have surfing experience but there's one person who doesn't the probe is going to go with the person who has surfing experience the both the both can do the job because they've both made it to the final two mm-hmm. but, but the one pro- has that like, but little... one has that <clears throat> little advantage of just knowing how to surf already i saw a meme though and it said at what point your method actors yeah. do go and do this that and the other for roles at what point does then it not become acting anymore and it's just yeah, you being you you know what i have a love hate relationship with method acting um i think we're past the point of um worshiping people who method act worshiping people who literally risk their lives and risk their mental health and well-being for the sake of a role mm-hmm. I think we've got to move past that. I can appreciate it, but like I said, I've got a love-hate relationship with it. I can appreciate it, but we shouldn't have to risk our mental health and well-being mm-hmm. for the sake of a role. But then you could just say, you know, I mean, um, Matt Damon at the moment, he was in the news because he hates how he's put like five stone on for this role. Yeah. Then you could say Chris Hemsworth and yeah. you know, Superman, Henry, what's his Henry Witcher, Witcher. Yeah. Henry Cavill. Yeah, yeah. Henry Savile? Savile? Cavill? Jimmy Savile? It's a bit awesome. <laughs> different one. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a different Savile. I've actually met Jimmy Savile, you know. Have you? Yeah, so when I was doing the VHS conversions, oh. right? Like, you know how everyone's like, oh, I, I, I've met one person famous. Mm-hmm. I was watching the VHS stuff. He was at one of the caravan. We had a caravan park for the sub- uh, six weeks. He was one of the people who, like, came from whatever event was happening at these caravan parks. And it's like, videotape for me, he's like a three, four year old child. And it's just like, my granddad's in, because the jumpsuits were all the way into there. So my granddad's in, like, this Jimmy Savile looking jumpsuit. And there's the Jimmy Savile just over there. Oh, God. And there's me as a kid with Jimmy Savile. Watch out. Like, Fucking <laughs> hell. Like, thank God you just took us back. Oh, God, that's. Ho- God. That's a close call. I know, so I know loads of people who's like, oh yes, I've met Tom Hardy, I've met Ron Atkinson, I've met Ryan Reynolds, and then it's like, I've met a big fan. I've met Jimmy Savile. <laughs> Has your I'm guy been in a documentary? <laughs> oh 
Oh my god. But no, yeah, them two. I mean, uh, Thor and Superman. Mm. Both, you know, pushed themselves beyond. Yeah. I mean, even Hugh Jackman when he did Wolverine. Yeah, like. Was so ill to it just to get that like eight yeah. seconds of a ripped ass body. Yeah, it's. There's got to be. There's got to be a point where you stop. I, I, I get people are like, I'm gonna die for the art, but you shouldn't have to die for the art. Like it's acting. Um, so I do, I do totally appreciate. It. I would probably be the same if I got the role of a lifetime that required me to be whatever, whenever. Mm-hmm. I would obviously do everything I can to get into it, but there's got to be a point where you think, I don't, I shouldn't have to damage my mental health for this yeah. or my well-being. I think we're past that point now. I think we've got to really look after people, look after their mental health, look after your mental well-being. That, that's surely more important, isn't it? Mm. I would think so. Um, but I totally appreciate all these actors who do do that because it's, it's amazing and it's incredible. Um, but I just hope they're all okay. <laughs> <laughs> you just like look at Henry, like how like, great he's successfully been. Yeah. How are you really? And he just he sits there and like the, the, the Graham Norton is like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't want these muscles. <laughs> yeah, it's, but, but like, we, we've all, one of the debates we had at drama school, God, this was a massive debate that really annoyed me, you know. <laughs> I want God. your opinion on this. Go, go, go. I remember having accent lessons on different accents. Um, right. And I remember someone specifically saying, I refuse to take on a role or work if I'm not going to be working in my own accent. And I thought, hang on. <laughs> hang on, yeah. Hang on a sec. Hang on. Call the phone. Don't you want to be an actor? And it's like, and she, she, put, she put up a debate and she was like, I'm going to put that out there. I refuse to work unless I'm only in my own accent. I want to stay true to me. Um, what, and it's like, the point of acting is to be, to be somebody else. Yeah. That is that is your job. You're meant to act like someone. Like someone. You else. can't, you know, be in the alien film. You know, the year uh, three billion and six is an extraterrestrial. It was crazy. Like, why am I not? It, you know. Literally, like, and I thought I had. I, I, I joined in the debate, and I thought because people want my opinion with having such a <clears throat> strong accent, like you never really hear on telly. Um, do we have a strong accent? We do apparently. <laughs> we do. Um, so we we put up this debate and people asked, oh, what do you think? And one, I, I would, I, I'm not ashamed of my accent, it's who I am, I'm a working class gal, this is what I sound like. I'm proud of it, accept it. I like how I don't hear it until you then just had to justify you speaking it and yeah. I started hearing it. So, so I would love to use my own voice if it's required for a role. Say Vera, ITV Vera, that's filmed in the North East. You would require a Northeast accent. Yeah. So that's great. That's one of the scenarios where I would work with my own accent, which is great. But if a rule came in and said, can you audition for this American mass? American piece, I'm not gonna be stupid to say, sorry, I can only work in this accent. Because what what what's you're limiting yourself. You limit you're only limiting yourself in what opportunities you've got. Like, that would be so niche it, for her. Like I I mean I'm not ask where she's from but like let's say she was from you know she was American or Georgia how little shows are like set here yeah. or played here or how characters with our accents mm. are ever used yeah like there definitely should be more voices like this on the telly because I never grew up and saw someone on the telly and gone oh they sound like me mm. I never did so I think there's definitely room for more voices like us I'm not saying we Nah, I'm never using this voice because I love my accent. I've accepted it. It took me a while to get used to it and go, you know what? I don't sound like any of these posh people at drama school. But that's it. So once I accepted it, I went, yeah, actually, there should be more voices like this on the telly. But at the same time, I'm not going to sit here and argue and go, I'm never going to work in a different accent because that is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. If the role requ- like requires it, then absolutely. Because at the end of the day, we're, we're actors acting as other people. And we bring that character to us and we embed it in the truth that we know and translate it into somebody else. And that's all a part of the job. And that's why it's so exciting getting to be somebody else, getting to do something different that's not you, but you find the truth 
in them and bring it to yourself and translate it. And I just think it's amazing. It's a mind fuck, but it's great. But that's the joy of it. So I just thought it was a really interesting debate to hear that. Um, but that was my take on it. Mm, well, I mean, you know, it's each to her own for her. If she really wants to, like, seclude herself like that, then... Mm. But, yeah, I just can't imagine a lot of people, especially yeah. if you get in acting, like, you know... Yeah. What you get into is just a vast, diverse range of whatever you're capable of, mm. you can act in. Yeah, like, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm the queen of accents, because I'm absolutely not. I can do my own accent. I was going to say, how many accents can you do? <laughs> I can do my own accent, I can do your general American, I can do RP, which is like... Sorry. RP is received pronunciation, which means basically posh. Go basically. On. Oh, God. Do you want me to say it? Um, hello and welcome to the podcast. Hello and welcome to podcast. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> what a radio voice as well. It's quite a mature, it's just very clear. It's sort of like your BBC News. Sort of. So I've used that accent in a show before, a drama mm-hmm. school. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the play slash film Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. I've heard of it, yes. So I played Estella in that, and she was a very spoiled brat, but very posh spoiled brat. So I had to use an RP accent for that. Mm-hmm. So why would I ever say, no, this character is going to have to be Macum. Macum, when the role doesn't require that. The role clearly states she's this, this, and this in RP. So it was really fun, though, to do that. It was mm. fun to do something completely different for me. That's the joy of it. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the best thing about it is about acting. Is, like, you can even take a set, you know, you get that realism of the world, but you take yourself away from you and just can be someone completely... And it's so great. You can be someone who's posh, someone who's rich. You can be cool. whoever you bloody want. And it's brilliant. And I love it. That's what I love. Be whoever you want. Do whatever you want. See, when you were saying to me, like, uh, just a, a little earlier this episode, um of how you know how great it is that I support you it's it's because like as much as I'm you know thrilled with you know my drama work or, or my film and media and photography you have that same like killer passion when it comes to drama and acting yeah. and, like I ask you one little question you were immediately like oh my god what do we do what do we talk about it? and immediately you just did that right to me <laughs> let me tell you and you just so, it's great because you are just so excited about it all and yeah. just like Mm. If you're not excited by it, then what are you doing? Like, you've got to have the passion. And I think, I mean, with what you do, with what I do, with anything that's creative, it's such a tough industry to be in. You've got to have the passion, you've got to have the drive, mm-hmm. the focus. You've got to have all of that. And it's so competitive and it's so difficult that if you're not enjoying it, what, why are you doing it? You've, you've got to love it because it's so difficult. Yeah. So even when it gets difficult, at least you still love it and you can push past it. Mm-hmm. And this is getting deep now. Uh, one of the things that was difficult, like with drama school for me, mm-hmm. um, was um, I'm very critical of myself. That's in all aspects of life, not just acting, but in general life. I'm just a very critical person because I'm a perfectionist. Yeah. I like to plan, I like to do things right. One of the hard things at drama school was knowing that you can't get something right all the time and actually sometimes when you get things wrong that's when it's better Mm -hmm. which sounds weird but we always say strong and wrong so do something strong with confidence follow your instinct it might be right Mm -hmm. but something amazing might come out of it um which was really hard for me to let go of because i was like no i've got to do it the same every time i've got to be prepared but actually you do all the preparation and you've got to be prepared to let that go and be total, totally like vulnerable to change. Yeah. Which is so crazy. And it sounds so wanky. <laughs> <laughs> but it is. And it's, it's Lovely beautiful. Words. Please say that in the posh accent. <laughs> it's so wanky. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, that was going to be such a sweet little bit. Yeah. Alright, there you go. Devil Wears Prada, right? <laughs> I love the Devil Wears Prada. You know what, right? It is. It's like one of them, like, guilty, like,
like pleasures. Like for me to like admit that I like like devil wears Prada. It's a brilliant film. I don't blame you. It's one of them films I watch when it's like raining outside and you go, I don't want to watch something new because mm-hmm. I don't want to focus too hard. And you go, oh, I'll watch that. Devil wears Prada. Love it. Absolutely love it. <laughs> what were we saying? Something about being wankers. <laughs> Not all I remember is. Oh, just about like <clears throat> letting go and being like totally vulnerable. Because it's, it, I know it sounds so stupid and so like, oh, you're such an actor, but it is a case of like you do all the hard work and you do all the preparation, but when you get on stage, you've got to let all that go mm-hmm. because anything can happen and you've got to be open to whatever the other person gives you, which is amazing because it's different every time and that's the beauty of it. Yeah, I suppose you can learn as well, like, people have different acting styles and that, so, like, if, you know, me and you were in a play with each other, mm. I learned something from you, which yeah. I've never tried that, you probably learned something from me. And it's brilliant, like, you learn off other people, the, that's the thing, there's no set way of doing it, mm-hmm. it's whatever works for you, and you kind of get bits and bobs from other people and go, oh, I think that works, I think that works, and you put it all together in the, your little toolkit of what works for you. And it's, all, it's like so individual to the people because I'm not an academic. I don't, I, I'm not great at sitting down and like analysing. I'm very much, I get up in the space and I see what happens. Yeah. So that's my way of working, whereas other people are very much like, I'm going to study. But that's just not me. Just I don't have the focal power to do that. I can't focus that I, I'm not, I'm, it does not work for me. But that, that's the beauty of it. It's just, it works for different people. People have different styles, different ways of working. And that's just one of the best things about it. Yeah. That's lovely. I think that's a nice little way to sort of segue on. Yeah. Um, is there any, I mean, feel free to leave any of your links, any contact details, if anyone wants to get in touch, see your work. Any links from anywhere? Or wherever you find your, what is it, your headshot in your... Headshot CV on the Spotlight. Yeah, Spotlight. Or spotlight. Or spotlight. Where can you find Spotlight? Spotlight. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a specific pin, which I don't know. How bad is that? <laughs> How when? <laughs> I don't know my pin. We'll go on my Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be somewhere. It'll be somewhere on my Twitter. God, I don't I know don't where. I don't actually not know your own pin. I don't know my own pin, it's just spotlight and then a couple of numbers, but if you just search Becky Lindsay, then you'll find it. <laughs> un- un- Unbelievable. <laughs> Remind me again that? how you don't have an agent. Uh, uh, there we go. That's it. Don't know my own pin. <gasps> oh dear. So thank you very much, Becky, for joining. Thank you. <laughs> uh, check out all of our links. The pin, when we'll find it, will be in the link in the description. Um, stay tuned for the next episode. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>